Hey, hey, it is 2022. Welcome. I'm Wes, and uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm, yeah, super, super excited that you're here. Excited it's a new year for sure, but, uh, you know, the, 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 the digs, the setup kind of feels the same. It kind of looks the same. I don't know how I feel about that. I think a new year needs a new energy, a new type of momentum, a new something. And, and I think uh, I have just the solution. All right, there it is. So new intro, a new look using my actual Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus as my camera. Right now I'm actually using my the same microphone, my Ars Technica microphone that's actually hooked up to my PC and I'm just editing the footage and the audio together separately. But I actually have a full uh, six foot tripod on the way. It's gonna have an external mic and an adapter to be able to use it. and on the phone because the phone itself doesn't have an auxiliary cable. But anyways, all that to say, things are slowly changing. In fact, I, I, I shaved since I did that first part of the intro and also new computer chair. My wife got me this awesome new computer chair, a higher back and a nice back pad because I'm an old man. Uh, <laughs> so it, it's nice to get you know stuff like that for, for holidays and my birthday's coming up in January 15th. So. Yeah, exciting. I'll be 36 years young. A lot of big things happening in 2022. Uh, but what I wanted to do in this video was break down three of my main kind of New Year's resolutions, main things that I wanted to do in 2022 um, and have you on board for that. Uh, one that deals directly with the YouTube channel and all of you. And then two that are more kind of a general art thing that I've been meaning to do. Um, but I also have a bucket list item that I think you're all going to be interested in to see if we can achieve some big bucket list thing in 2022. So without further ado, let's go. Uh, we're going to take a look at this Demon Souls painting that I did recently. I hope you like the new look of stuff. It's going to be tweaking more and more as, you know, as we do more videos in the year. So some things that you may see in this video might change slightly or something. Um, the music might shift. So we, who knows? But just know that my mind's a going. I, I'm, I'm going through the process and uh, any recommendations you guys have, I'd love to hear them. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into my three top goals, my New Year's resolutions for the year 20. 22. All right, so I hope you guys like the new look. Yeah, Happy New Year. Um, I wanted to have like a little Blade Runner e vibe going into the new year. I don't know. It feels dystopian and cyberpunky, right? <laughs> anyway, I want to cover three of my main goals uh, for this year. Uh, one of them has to do directly with the YouTube channel, and then the other two are really more generalized in regards to art. But while I'm talking about this, I wanted to show some of this uh, Demon Souls painting that I made. This one actually took me quite a while. I think there's about an hour of footage here. Um, yeah, this one was a lot of fun. I was able to find a pretty good method on sticking with correct value and just changing hue for colors, which I was really excited about. I also used a lot of the mixer brush whenever I was first putting down colors and shapes and things like that, and I really enjoyed that. So, you know, I've been using so many different painting softwares. I am prepping to do my 2022 digital painting overview, um, software overview video. 
So I've been using a lot of stuff and Photoshop's kind of taken a back seat. So I wanted to get into Photoshop and, you know, it, it's like the, the long lost love type thing, right? Like I've used it for, oh God, almost two decades now. So it's, you know, it's a tried and true thing. It's just, I need to find a way to make it a little bit more spontaneous. And I think primarily using the mixer brush is a, is a good way to do that. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy this footage of the Demon Souls piece. I know it's on my portfolio now and uh, uh, yeah, it's been taken off on Insta and Twitter. So yeah, hope you enjoy. But let's get into these kind of New Year's resolutions as they were. So the first New Year's resolution I need to make for me because I know it's going to impact my growth in a positive way. Uh, artistically is I need to sketch more I need to sketch I need to actually just instead of thinking it as drawing as a form of illustration I need to sketch I need to be messy I need to get over kind of my fear of just using graphite or like a charcoal pencil or whatever and this is digital um, but also traditional I think uh, a great way for me to be able to do this, I've been using more of Infinite Painter and Procreate on my iPad. And with the Apple Pencil, I have I think I found a decent little workflow that I like. I, I've used it enough over the holiday break that now it feels a little more natural to me. Both of them do. Uh, both Procreate and Infinite Painter do. Um, and I, I think Art Studio Pro is one I'm going to look at as well, um, probably in a future video. But anyway... I'm, I'm using that more instead of making full-on paintings in those programs. I think I'm really going to use it as my mobile sketchbook. And that way I can also export those files and maybe bring them into Clip Studio or, you know, Rebel or R Rage or whatever. And then work on them on my desktop in my normal workflow. But I think sketching is going to be good for me. And the reason why is um, I really need to work more from imagination. I'm... You know, I'm okay at kind of the referencing and looking at something and kind of transferring it onto a canvas. I still have a lot of work to do in regards to proportion and eyeballing um, distances and things like that. But overall, I feel like given enough time, I can make an okay representation of something if I see it and then put it on the canvas. But with sketching, this is an area where I can work primarily from imagination and start seeing if things work or not quickly. So there's always that saying that the best way to get better is just to fail faster. And I think sketching will be the best way to fail faster. It'll be the best way to kind of get bad poses or bad compositions or whatever out of the way and then make tweaks to them and kind of improve them. And I know that seems pretty obvious for a lot of people. A lot of people may do this anyway. You see other pros, they do like thumbnailing and stuff like that. I don't really thumbnail a lot, so this might be my kind of introduction into that more so. Um, I've done like mood pieces and quick concepts and stuff, but really it's just with big blocky paint brushes and I smear paint around and then it's almost like finding an image in the clouds. Like, oh, that kind of looks like this and then I take it from there, which is a fine way to work. But I think I need to be a little bit more deliberate and more planned in regards to certain things, especially if I want to get a gig at, you know, Wizards of the Coast or whatever, it's a little bit more exacting. Not necessarily more rendered or more polished, uh, because there's plenty of art there that's fairly, not rough, but, you know, um, speed painty and, uh, y you know, kind of that traditional look, but, you know, it's not as, like, pixel perfect as you would see in like splash art for let's say like League of Legends or something. You know what I mean? Like you can get away with a little bit more artistic uh, licensing and liberties. But with sketching, it's going to make me design stuff. It's going to make me design outfits. I'm going to have to design how the belt buckle looks. I'm going to have to do that stuff. And I think even though it's hard and my brain doesn't really work that way right now, with more practice, hopefully it will. And then I can take those better designs into my painting. I'll be more excited to paint those, you know, character concepts or, uh, you know, call out sheets or whatever. Um, just because I'm going to have almost uh, not a color by numbers, but I'm going to know where I'm going before I get started. 
if that makes sense. So yeah, I think sketching more, that's my number one. Uh, that's really my number one, whether it's digital or traditional in my sketchbook with charcoal and you know all that stuff. I think sketching is going to be a huge boon to my artistic growth this year, and I'm looking forward to making videos about it and um, stuff like that, but also just doing it on my own time, posting it on social. So social is going to have a lot of stuff that's not on my portfolio or not even on my uh, YouTube or Art Rage or Art uh, Art Rage. Listen to me, Art Station. Um, yeah. So if you want to see kind of the sketchbooky stuff, be sure to follow the uh, the socials. But speaking of, you know, the videos and things like that, I am actually going to be making more bite-sized tutorials based on specific techniques here on the YouTube channel completely free for you guys. Um, it's something I've thought about for a while. I didn't quite know how to approach it, but now with a new refresh, with a new redesign, with new camera gear, with all this stuff, I think there's a there's an avenue here that will be very, very helpful. So whenever I think of like bite-sized techniques or tutorials, I'm thinking anywhere between the 10 to 20 minute, but we dedicate that specific time only to one thing. So like painting hair, or, you know, emulating depth of field with painting, or when to use a hard brush versus a soft brush, or uh, anatomy, or you know what I mean, like the, the shape of a skull, or the, uh, the best way to blend between different hues in the same value range. Or, you know, what are the most effective ways of contrast in a piece? So like, these will be all sorts of techniques, whether it comes down to just painting, like the dexterity of it, or if it's going to be more theory based. I know the channel last year, we did a lot of discussing mental things, so mentalities of like, what are your biggest fears and as an artist and more of the psychological stuff. Uh, this year, I want to make more of a stance on actual technique. So I've gotten a lot of, you know, Patreon requests and I got a lot of uh, DMs on social media and stuff about specific techniques. And I think this will be a really cool way to do that. Um, it's something I'm excited about. But hey, if you have any ideas, um, you know, like painting clouds or whatever, let me know in the comments. Um, I am making a huge list and I would love to cover whatever topic you may be struggling with or just want to have a different perspective or viewpoint on. Uh, I would love to cover it. So let me know, please, please, please. I already have a list of about 30 things. <laughs> so that's almost one calendar year if that's a, you know, one video a week. But there's always more. And if there's something specific or something popular lately, um, you know, I want to be able to kind of dig in. And it helps me learn more about it as well. So by teaching, you actually learn because you have to simplify your ideas down into a way that um, people can understand. So it always helps me. As well so uh, yeah I think the more bite-sized tutorials for the channel completely free of charge for you guys is a big big one coming into the year so that's my number two number three kind of goes into uh, the, the sketch more thing but um use more traditional media um, namely oil painting I have my water soluble oils and I've only made two real paintings with it um, I love them. I love the water soluble oils. It's great. They feel perfect. I even mix a little bit of liquid in there and it's like a dream. You know what I mean? Um, it, it's great. It's way less toxic, uh, as far as having any solvents or anything around because the kiddos are running around and you know, um, Oliver is, you know, he's almost eight months old. So, um, he's, he's about to get ready to start walking and crawling and, you know, exploring and doing all that stuff and I want to make sure I don't have any real kind of potentially toxic things around um, and having the water soluble oils you know out of reach and stuff like that just gives me a little bit more peace of mind as a parent so uh, we're going to do that but I think it's also going to help me kind of go back in the same way as the sketching doing more sketching is going to build confidence and like decision making I think making oil paintings is going to do the same thing because oil is pretty forgiving, to be fair, but it's still not as forgiving as opaquely painting on a digital canvas. You know what I mean? Like you can always undo. I don't usually use the undo button all that much. Um, I either just paint over or erase. That's just how I work. But um, 
But I think the decision making side of it and pre planning and, you know, picking the color uh, gamut and things like that are going to be helpful because that's what you have to do as an oil painter. But that's also going to feed into my more uh, digital stuff, maybe for clients. And yeah, I just think any other way to just spice up that creative process is a good thing coming into the new year. And um, yeah, I think I think the oil painting thing alongside the sketching is going to make some big leaps and bounds. Uh, just my understanding of color, my understanding of like chroma and, um, you know, contrast and, you know, what's my focal point and especially composition. I think composition is one of my weakest areas. I always just kind of say, hey, let's do a two point perspective or a one point perspective and do the rule of thirds. Let's do it. And that that's fine, but th there's so much more than that. I mean, I need to get into three point perspectives or maybe even up to like five or six point, do some weird fish island stuff and a little bit more dramatic and dynamic compositions. And I think pre-planning things and really working in that more traditional style because there's really no take backs. Once it's on there, it's on there. You can scrape oil paint a little. Um, you can do that. And yeah, it does stay wet for a lot longer than your acrylics or your watercolor. But it's still fairly permanent. You know what I mean? You have to make the decision. Um, and, and even if we want to go to true hard mode, um, whenever I go to sketching, <laughs> once I get a little more comfortable, if I start getting cocky, I can just start uh, drawing an ink pen. And there's really no take backs here. Like once that line is down, it's down, man. <laughs> so you gotta be good. Um, but as a quick bonus, um, so those are my three. So to cover them again, number one is to sketch more. Uh, just do sketching for sketches sake and, and get that taken care of. Um, you really just help my design sensibilities. Uh, number two is make more bite-sized tutorials for the YouTube channel dedicated to specific techniques. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about that because I think those are things you can just go back and reference uh, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And I'll still be making premium tutorials, more long form, beginning to end type things. But I think for the YouTube, really focusing on those little bite-sized uh, tutorials is going to be pretty effective. And then... And then number three, traditional media. Use more sketchbooks and oil paints and all that stuff. Uh, I, I think, yeah, it all kind of feeds back into itself. So all of these have the main theme of better understanding of the craft, being a better drafts person. And whether that means, yeah, making your design decisions before you put them on the canvas or by teaching others uh, specific techniques to simplify them down into repeatable, actionable steps, I think critical that all kind of feeds into the same thing of learning and you know you can never not learn you know what i mean like you can never stop learning and always be a white belt um you know if you're a martial artist or whatever like always be a white belt don't say you're a black belt or a red belt or what just always be a white belt you're always learning you're always taking in new info and i think that's an important step in becoming the best uh, artist you can be is realize that there's so much more to learn. You're never going to learn it all. And hopefully you'll just, you know, fill your, your mental bucket with these uh, amazing techniques and stuff. Hopefully so much so that some of them become second nature and you never have to think about them again. And that's really the goal, that that way you work on instinct and your instincts are so good that you end up making the art that you see in your brain as is the goal of every artist ever. <laughs> right so those are the three those are the three big ones but as a bonus i wanted to do a bucket list item so a bucket list item and i'm going to do one of these every year a bucket list item is something that i've always wanted to do that i really want to put my mind towards and my focus towards in order to make it a reality and this year kind of feeds in to that kind of more confidence and tutorial stuff I would like to get a tutorial published in Imagine FX magazine. So I was featured in issue 190 of Imagine FX uh, in the FX Pose area. And I love, I've had Imagine FX magazine since like 2009, 2010. I love that book. I, I love the magazine. It's always so inspiring and creative. And it's so funny to go back and read old issues. Like, I think there's a 2009 issue that shows like, oh, this up and coming ar artist, Jama Jurabev, 
And, uh, <laughs> you know, you see names like that, and you're like, oh, my gosh, everyone started somewhere, you know. And I think maybe the next steps for my art career in regards to, like, providing for my family is to get um, maybe some tutorial and be an instructor on the one magazine that's helped me throughout the past decade. You know what I mean? Um, it'd be a huge honor, but I got work to do. Um, that being said, I do have a huge announcement for February, in the middle of February, around, um, I want to say Valentine's Day. I'll be able to discuss it, but I have already worked with a bucket list client. It's one of the biggest, uh, I'll just go ahead and say it's one of the biggest game studios on earth. And I was able to work with them on a really cool project. And then, um, let's see. Oh yeah, and by the way, this summer, my book is coming out. So I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but uh, I am making a digital painting book. And we're, I think, uh, I looked at the little radar, it says we're 64% of the way done with it. Um, it's going to be uh, tentatively released in August. I'm going to have a lot more information about what it is. Uh, but basically, put it on your radar. It's going to be 13 chapters. And I'm talking many, 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 many words and pictures. And <laughs> we've been working on it for a better part of a year now. Uh, it's from a major publisher. It's going to get translated into a lot of different languages. I think over 10 languages, which is exciting. But yeah, big publisher, big book. I mean, this book's going to be 300 plus pages. And uh, it's going to be about digital painting uh, from beginning to end and kind of all the tips and tricks I know and things like that. But m once again, more news, um, some preview content and stuff like that coming down the pipe. But expect it to come out around the August time frame, I think, is what we're discussing. So, yeah, big things already happening in 2022. But uh, these are the main three plus the bucket list item that I wanted to share with you all. What are your goals for 2022? I would like to know. Um, do you have anything specific set in mind or do you just want to keep on keeping on? I mean, we're getting through this pandemic and all these different variants and all that stuff going out and like everyone just needs to stay safe. You know, I mean, you, your mental well-being comes first and foremost before any productivity. Um, I just, you know, staying inside and stuff like that, it gives me great reason to really dedicate time to the craft and really push forward in the next steps of my career. But I'm so glad that you're here on the journey with me. Um, I love talking to you guys. I love the Discord. I love this community. Um, and that's why I kind of want to give back a little more uh, than I have before just by doing some more bite-sized, repeatable tutorial content, free of charge, completely for everybody. Digital art is a, a, a great equalizer because everybody can really get started and uh there's really a low barrier of entry now and i think that's an exciting place to be and i'm excited for us to work together to make your artistic dreams come true the same way we're working real hard <laughs> to, to hopefully make some of mine come true as well but that's it i hope you like the new look um it's a little bit more gritty a little bit more uh i, I don't know i hate to say dystopian um because you know i'm a pretty positive person but I just love that style. I love the kind of grunge, Blade Runner-y, you know, it, it's sexy and terrible all at the same time. <laughs> it's kind of the perfect way to describe it. Um, <laughs> anyway, I uh, can't wait to talk to you guys. I hope you're having a safe 2022. And hey, we made it. 2021 is in the bag. We're off to a new year and we're getting things started. So I will see you all very soon. Talk to you soon.